Good morning, everyone. I think we can go ahead and get started for this week. Um, my name is Alex. I will be conducting today's webinar just like I do each and every week. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are joining us uh, again, welcome back. Uh, before we get started, I just want to give everyone a little overview of how everything works. Up in your upper left corner, I believe, you'll see two buttons, one for Q&A and one for chat. If at any point in time during the course of the webinar you have any questions regarding what we're covering um, or just general questions at all about your website, go ahead and utilize the Q&A feature to submit that question. Uh, once we get done with our topic for today, we set aside some time to go over just general questions. So um, if a question submitted and it doesn't have anything to do with what I'm covering right at the moment, I'm going to set it aside and I'll get to it when we get to our Q&A portion. So, uh, but if you have any questions about what we're doing or what I'm, co what I'm covering at the time, by all means, submit your question and I will do my best to answer it right off the bat. Um, all the questions that get submitted will be answered. Um, like I said, if it's not relevant to what we're doing, I'll set it aside and we'll cover it in the Q&A portion. So, if you have any comments at any point in time during the webinar, um, if I'm going too fast or, or you'd like me to repeat something, by all means, utilize the chat feature and let me know. Um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but once again, if you have any questions, please utilize the, the Q&A feature. Uh, makes it a lot easier for me to keep track of questions and make sure I get them all answered. So, all right. Now, with that's out of the way, uh, let's give you a little summary of kind of what we're doing. Um, what we've been doing the last few weeks is taking a health coach template and just going through and customizing it not really changing much about what comes with the template, such as the provided content and so on, um, just changing the way that things look. Uh, we've been doing a little bit here and there every week, and uh, so we're just gonna continue with that this week. So what we've been starting with, we started with one of our, our newer templates, the Saver template. And this is what the, the Saver template looks like right out of the box. This is the homepage. And these are the, the inside pages, the My Training page, and this is all the, the provided content that is the same on each and every template. So what we've been doing is going through and, and customizing it, just changing the way things look. So this is the home page of what we started with. This is what we turned it into. All of the same content, same text and everything is there. We just added some pictures, changed some colors, rearranged some things a little bit. We've also done that to several of the other pages. Uh, we did the About Me page. There's the, the example of what it comes with with the template. We actually changed it up to be a little bit more personal. Just changed the look. Nothing extraordinary, nothing overly difficult. Uh, everything that we've done, we've done throughout the course of the webinar. So we didn't do any, any technical stuff. It's just a matter of moving stuff around and changing colors. So. Uh, last week, we actually tackled the, the health coaching page. This is what it looked like when we started, and this is what it looked like when we were done. Very simple, kept all the same content, just changed it up a little bit to make it look a little different, make it look a little more, no, <clears throat> excuse me, make it look a little bit more unique. So. Uh, today we'll be continuing on. We are going to be doing the My Approach page, which this is what it looks like on our on the template when we first started. Um, this is what it currently looks like. So we are going to be tackling this one today, and by the end of our session, we're going to have a completely different look to this page, but we're going to keep all the same content. Um, we're also going to hopefully get to the Forms page, um, this one here as well as the individual forms themselves. So uh, that's the plan for today. We kind of got a lot to cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. Uh, but again, if you have any questions throughout the, the webinar, please utilize the Q&A feature to submit that question. If it's relevant to what I'm covering, I'll answer it. If it's not, I'm gonna set it aside until we get to the Q&A portion and uh, we'll tackle it there, okay? Um, for those of you that are new, I do want to point out that the webinar is being recorded. 
So if you have to jump off at any point in time, you can't stay for the whole thing, that's totally fine. You'll always be able to go back and watch the video at any point in time. Uh, all of our videos are stored in our support portal, which is just iansupport.getliveedit.com. In our knowledge base section, we have our webinar video gallery. And this actually displays all of the webinar videos that we have. There's currently three pages of them. The most recent one is I was first. So this is last week's session. Um, this week's session will, re will be posted here later on this afternoon. So you can always go back and rewatch anything that you missed. So no worries there. All right, so let's go ahead and hop to our My Approach page and close out some of these tabs. And let's get started. Now, I won't spend a lot of time explaining exactly what I'm doing. We've covered that extensively through some of the previous episodes. Um, so I'll do my best to go slow. Like I said, if, if I'm going too fast, if, I'm hard being, if you're having a hard time following, let me know. And I'll do my best to, uh, to slow down a little bit. Um, but for the most part, what we're doing today is the same thing we've been doing for the last six weeks. So there's really no, um, no difference. Uh, Sarah says, can you explain how to access the previous webinars? Just covered that. Just go to the support portal, which is iansupport.getliveedit.com. Click on the knowledge base. Right here in the webinar video gallery section, that's where they are. You can click on any one of those. Video pops up and you can watch it. So you can always do it that way. Like you said, we have a number of, of webinars, three pages worth of webinars listed to watch. Um, each one has a little summary listed below it to tell you, kind of give you an idea of what we've been doing. Um, and they're there, available for you anytime, any day. So, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing that I want to do to begin working on the page is I need to log into my site. Um, so to log in, just go to your URL. Um, in my case, it's just savertraining.liveatorora.com. At the end, just type in backslash login and enter in your email address and the password that you used when you ordered your site. If at any point in time you forgot what that is, click forgot password, enter in your email address and click change password. You'll be then sent a new email from Live Edit with a new password to use to log in. Once you get logged in, you'll see your toolbar up at the top here. Uh, if you had to go through the process of changing your password, I do recommend going to your profile once you log in and clicking on password and changing your password to something that you're going to remember. It makes it a lot easier going forward. So. All right, so now that we're logged in, we're gonna hop over to the My Approach page, and let's get started. All right, so one of the things that I'm gonna do, which we've been doing on the previous pages, is uh, if we pop open one of our other pages, such as you know the My Training page or the About Me, we've been changing the color up on the top in the section there, so I'm gonna do that very same thing. And to do that, I'm going to click on my little blue notepad icon here and just select my background color that I'd like to use. Um, the colors that I've been using, I got from a, a wonderful website called coolers.co. Um, they have a, a wide variety of color palettes. This is their, their main site. So it's just coolers.co. And you can click the Explore link. And you can see their library of color palettes that you can cycle through. It's a great resource to find a good color scheme to use for your site. Once you find one, you can just click on view and you'll see the different informations for the, the colors that you selected. You'll see me using that relatively frequently. Um, people always ask where I get that from. That's where I get it from. So this is the color palette that I've selected to use for this site. Um, it's nice and um, nice and bright without being overwhelming. So I like to, to stick with this one. So, <clears throat> all right. So when I selected my color, um, I clicked on background color, clicked up here. This is my little 
uh, palette, this section right here, um, this is my previously used colors, and I selected this blue color, uh, which it happens to be this blue color here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And usually after I make a save, I just like to give the page a quick refresh, just to make sure I'm looking at the most recent version of my page. So, all right, so I'm gonna do that. Now I'm gonna scroll down, and one of the things we've been doing with our, our headings here is, I like to keep it the same, but just capitalize and center my text. Just think that's a nice, nice little look to it. Um, I'm also going to move this lower portion, this paragraph here, um, I'm gonna move it from this section here to this one here. And you'll see why in a minute. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and for section one here, I actually want to add in a, a background image. So I'm going to select my blue notepad icon for that section. I'm going to click add background image. Now I've already uploaded all my images to my file manager uh, to save time. So I'm going to find my folder and the image that I want to use, which is right here. Now, because I'm selecting my background picture, this gives me the information about the picture. This also gives me the sizing. We've talked about sizing before. Um, because it's a background picture, I wanna make sure it's, it's large enough. But this dimension here, this 5,184 uh, by 3,456 3, is very, very large. To put that in comparison, what you're seeing on my screen is roughly about 1500 pixels wide. So this picture originally is 5,000 pixels wide. So it's significantly larger than what you're seeing now. And it doesn't need to be that large. When you place an image this large, it's fine. It's not gonna cause any issues. But because the picture is so large, when people visit their web, your website, it's gonna take a little bit longer to load because that picture is so big. Larger images or larger files, larger files take time to load. So when you're selecting your sizing, just kind of keep that in mind. Now to change the sizing for this picture, I can click on this little notepad icon here. And I can select from these kind of generic sizes. But since I'm, excuse me, since I'm placing a background picture, I don't want it to be very small like that. I actually want it to be rather large. I just don't need it that large. So I can go down to the create with portion and I can add in a custom width. Um, generally, you're not gonna need anything bigger than 1900 pixels. So we can go with 1900. We enter in our width and then click the little blue arrow here. And now we have a new size. So we have a, a new dimension of 1900 by 1266. That'll be just fine. And I can click accept. Now I've placed my picture. Now, generally when I place my picture, I go through my settings, and for background color, I like to select this one right here. This is transparent. You can see that the, the numbers equal zero. That just ensures me that when my page first loads up, there's not gonna be a background color that appears before the picture does. Um, it's just something I like to do. Doesn't matter if you do it or not. It's just a personal preference. Now, when it comes to the settings, image repeat, no, my picture is large enough, even if I set it to repeat, you'd never see it. Image size, I like to use cover. Cover ensures that my background image will always cover the area that it's supposed to. So I don't have to worry about the picture being too big, too small, or anything like that. Image scroll, I like to use fixed. Um, for those of you that have joined in on previous webinars, you know I like to use the fixed, approach, uh, fixed scroll. Uh, I've done it a lot throughout this series. So um, I like the effect, I think it looks cool, so I like to use it. And image position, this is where you want the focus of your picture to be. Most cases it's gonna be centered. Um, with an image this large, it's not going to make all that much of a difference. Um, so I usually just stick with the center. Now that I have my, my settings there, I can go ahead and click save. And then I give my page a quick refresh. 
And there we have my background picture. You can see when I scroll, it stays fixed in the background. That's what that fixed setting means. Now that I've added this lovely background image, I can't see my text, which is okay. I can fix that. One of the things I'm gonna do first is this section here where my text is for my heading. I'm gonna click on the notepad icon for that container. And for background color, I'm gonna select white. And if I move this out of the way, you can see that there is white. But I'm also going to use this little sliding bar here and I'm going to adjust the intensity of it. You can see in the background there, I can make it so you can still see the background image behind it, which is what I want to do. I want to be able to see the text, but I also want, don't want to hide that image. So I'm going to go ahead and make that setting like that and save my changes for now. I'm going to do that same thing for this section down here with this text. Now, because I've just used that background color up here, It'll actually show up right here again, so I can just click on that, and it's the same exact color number. Get the page a quick refresh. So now I can actually see my text on top of my background picture. The downfall is I don't get to see a lot of my background picture, and it doesn't really look that nice. So we're going to make some adjustments. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to space this out so this My Approach text isn't so tight and flush with my, my menu area. And to do that for section one, I can click on my notepad and I can go into the spacing and I can adjust the padding for that section. We've talked about padding before. Um, you'll see it represented here in a, in a second. Uh, what padding does is it adds some spacing from the top of this section here to when this content area starts. So you'll see this when I go to the top section here and add in padding, and I'll just be super dramatic and I'll add in 100 pixels for now. And you'll see that now there's a big space here between where this section starts and where this content area starts. That's what I want. I just don't want it quite as much. So I'm actually going to use 25, just like that. I'm also going to do a little bit on the bottom as well, a little bit more. So you can see down here, I just added some here. I'm not going to worry about the right and the left because I want my background picture to be the width of my, my screen. So I'm always going to leave that at zero. And then I can go ahead and save my changes. Give the page a quick refresh. And now you see it's nicely spaced out just a tad bit more. Another thing that I want to do with my bottom paragraph here is, is do some spacing there so my text is actually um, easy to see, easy to read, and it looks nice. So I'm going to go back into edit mode, and for this content area, I'm going to click on here, and I'm going to go to spacing. And generally with stuff like this, I like to just do a uniform spacing of the same sizing all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and refresh that. And that just gives it a nice, even kind of spacing all the way around that text. And while I'm editing that text, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it's using the font format that I want to use. When I click on my text here, you'll see some formatting down in the lower left corner. We've talked about this before. Um, this current text right here doesn't have any formatting on it. Um, it's, it's plain, it's basic, I can do whatever I want to it. Um, but in this case, I don't want to do that. I want it to actually be my settings for my main text. Uh, so it's consistent throughout the rest of the website. So to do that, I'm just going to highlight each piece of text, go under formats and blocks and select paragraph. And you can see that change in the background there. And paragraph is actually the, the same settings that you put in your typography for your main text right here. This is also paragraph, it's the same thing. So um, I want that to be consistent throughout the website. That's why I'm going through and changing 
and applying that format to this text. So now you see when I click on any of this text, there's this little P in the corner. That lets me know that's the paragraph format. So I'm gonna do the same thing for this text here. And you can see it change in the background. And I wanna do the same thing for all of this text here. Just like that. Now, another thing that I want to do, because this text is, is larger in bold, I want to make sure everything is uniform to start with. So I'm going to highlight just that portion. And I can see these formats here, span and strong. Span means that something has changed with this text. In this case, it's actually made larger. And strong is just bold. So if I click the B for bold, the strong goes away. And my, phone, my font is no more bold. Um, if I click on this clear formatting, it actually brings this back down to normal paragraph. So my text is all 100% the same. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure my spacing is correct. So I'm going to go one paragraph at a time, place my cursor here, and just hit delete and return. So now I have my spacing in the background the way that I want it. Just like that. And I want to do that same thing with that first sentence again. I want to make it um, a little bit, stand out a little bit. So I'm going to highlight it again. And I'm going to select by bold. And I'm going to go down to format and font size and select a font size that's bigger than what the rest of the font is. Uh, I'm gonna give 24 a shot, and I can see there that it looks nice. Um, with this particular font, you can't really tell when it's bold, um, but you can see a distinct difference there. So I think I'm gonna be happy with that. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and save that change. Now I'm gonna close out of edit mode. Give my page a quick refresh. I can see that I have a little bit of space up here on the top here. So I'm just gonna go back into edit mode and delete that. And there we go. All right, so now I want to have my, my text set up. So I have it the way that it looks. I just want to tweak those, those text boxes just a tad so they look nice. Right now, they're, they're very square, and that's a nice look, but I want to make them look a little bit better than that. So for each one of them, I'm going to go back into my notepad settings, and I'm going to make some small adjustments. First off, I'm gonna go with the border. And on the border, I'm gonna select a solid border. <clears throat> For color, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm gonna stick with the same color that I'm using, this transparent white, so it's not too, um, too outstanding, uh, but it's up to you. Um, for border width, I'm just gonna use one. If I were to increase that to 12 or something like that, you can see in the background here, that border gets very thick. And I want it to be a very subtle border, so I'm just gonna use one. And border radius actually allows you to have um, rounded edges. So in this case, if I go to 30, I can see this nice little rounded edge on, my, on the corners there. And I like that. So I'll go ahead and save that change. Give it a quick refresh, and there you go. You can see that difference now. You can also see that my two sections here are, are very close together. So I'm gonna once again adjust the, the spacing for this section. Do a little bit on the top and a little bit on the bottom. Now for the right and left, I don't need to worry about it because there's my text is already centered. But because I only have a little bit of text, what I want to do is I want to use what the margins. I'm going to use some right and left margins as well as some bottom margin. 
Uh, margin is actually the space outside of this, this content area. Um, and I'll demonstrate. If I go to the bottom margin, for example, and I do, I'll just do 100 again to be very drastic. When I do that, you see this space has been added, but the space is outside of this content area. So it's outside of the blue lines. If I did 100 for my bottom padding, you see my space is added, but it's inside the content area. That's the biggest difference between margin and padding. So margin is outside, padding is inside. Okay, so my bottom margin will be nice because it'll give me a space between the my approach section and this subsequent paragraph. So I'm gonna do something hmm, moderate like that. Now, as far as the right and the left, I'm just gonna do a little bit on the right and a little bit on the left. Not a lot, because I'll show you what happens. If I were to do a lot on the right, let's say I did 100 on the right and 100 on the left, and save my change, go ahead and refresh my page, you would think that this looks nice. I've made this section kind of a little bit smaller, and so on. But what happens is if I shrink down my screen to show what it looks like relatively similar to on like a mobile device, you can see this is what happens. This does not look good at all. So I want to make sure when I'm editing my page like that, that those things don't happen. So when I'm adjusting my spacing here, I'm just going to be relatively subtle with it. So if I put 35 there, go ahead and save my change. Do a quick refresh. Now when I minimize my window to something smaller like this, I can see that this still looks very nice. So I don't have to worry about what it will look like on uh, when somebody pulls up the website on phone, it'll still look nice. Now I'm actually going to do those same settings for this text box as well to kind of keep things consistent. So I'm going to click on my blue notepad icon here. I'm going to set the same kind of border, the same color, the same border width and the same border radius. Now spacing, I've already taken care of the spacing so I don't need to worry about anything else. And I'm gonna go ahead and save my change and then go ahead and refresh. And now I have this text on top of my background image and it just stands out a little bit, looks nice. Um, it's easy to read for the most part. So um, it's just a nice, easy way to customize things. Diana asks, how did you get back to lightening the background under the text? That's setting the background color for that content area. So for this content area where this text is, I clicked on my blue notepad icon and I set a background color. I can set whatever color I want, just like that. When you're setting your color, you can adjust with this slider the intensity so you can see the image behind it. So that's how we did that. All right, refresh my page. And we've got that top section all done. Now we scroll down a little bit. We see this being healthy doesn't have to be, excuse me, this being healthy doesn't have to be hard text, which we already have up here in our, in our header. So I can actually delete this right there. I'm not going to use it. I already have it on the page, so we're, we're good. All right, so now we've gotten that. Uh, we're actually going to continue moving on down the page. Um, we're actually in section two here. We can see that right now we don't have any content in it. 
which is perfectly fine. I'm actually not going to put any content in it. But what you'll see is, and I'll demonstrate this, if I go down to section three and I change this background color for section three, just for an example, to orange. And I close out of edit mode and refresh my page. See this little white line here? That is actually section two. Um, no matter what you do, you can change that color to something else, but you'll always see a little thin line of section two. The same thing would be if I don't use anything in section three, you're always going to see that little thin line. Some people might not care. I personally find it a little annoying, but there's a way to, sol there's a way to solve that. Um, and we're actually going to solve it for the rest of the page. Um, I like this background image that I used for the top section. So I'm actually going to use that same background image for the rest of the sections on the page. So for section two here, I'm going to click on my notepad icon, click on background image, find my picture, which was this one here. Because I've already placed this picture, I can go to this little notebook thing here, and I can see that size that I've already used, this 1900, so I can select that and pl place my picture. Now I'm gonna do the exact same settings that I have that I did for the first section. And then just save my change. Refresh my page. And now you don't see that white line anymore. And the reason you don't see that is when I go into edit mode, you can see that section two now has that same background image. And because I have the settings where the image is fixed and everything is in the same exact position, the same exact settings, it looks like it's just one background image like that. So I'm actually going to do that for section three as well. So for section three, I'll click on my settings. I'm not going to use a background color, but I'm going to place that same exact image one more time. Use my same settings. Click accept. None. Cover. Center. Fixed. Save. Refresh my page. Now it looks like I have that same image as the background for the entire page, which I think is pretty cool. Nice little effect. So now that we have that set up that way, we have these pieces of text that we can't see. So we're going to be doing the exact same thing that we did on this top section for the rest of the text throughout the page. So it's gonna be very, very simple um, because we've already done it once. So we will start with this first piece of text here. I'm going to highlight this text, or not the text itself, but the actual settings here. And I want to apply a background color. This time I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to use this darker color here. So I can actually click on this color and copy it. And when I click on my background color section, I can go to this box right here paste that in and it'll show me that color and if I've used it before it'll highlight that color over here I can click select so there we have our color uh, but I can't see my text uh, which is makes it difficult so I'm actually going to change the color of the text as well so I'm going to click on my text and while I'm here I'm going to highlight my text and I'm gonna to go to text color, and I can select my color. Um, I'm gonna to go to custom, because I want it to be this orange here. This orange and this blue go very well together. So I'm gonna copy this color, and I'm gonna paste that into the number section here. Now there's my text, and you can see it in the background. So I'm gonna save my change. Give the page a quick refresh. There we go. 
to keep this rounded corner look that I have, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the other areas. I'm going to go into my border section and I'll do a solid border. And I'm going to pick the same color and I'm going to do a border width of one and a radius of 30. And that'll give me a nice rounded color. One of the things that I would like to do with this section is make that background color a little bit more transparent so I can see the image. So I'm going to click on my color and then in the little slider section here, I'm just going to adjust that. What I can do is I can move this out of the way and then adjust it so that I can see it happening in the background. So I'm just going to make it just a little bit like that. And then I want my border to be that same color. So and there's that color. And I can go ahead and save that. So there we have that. I also want to adjust some of the spacing here so we don't have our text right up next to each other like we have. So just like we did before, I'm going to adjust some of the, the margins. Again, margins is outside of the content area. So that'll actually give me a space between this, this content area here and these three below it. So I'm gonna go to my spacing. And just for the bottom margin, I'll do that 45 again. Now you can see that there's a space just like that. So I can click Save, refresh my page. Now I have this nice space there. All right, let's move on now down to these three columns of text here. Uh, one of the things I want to do with this is I want to take this image and I just want to place it above the text. So I'm just going to drag and place it right above the text like that. And we need to add in our background colors so we can see our text. And one of the things that we're going to do is change it up again a little bit. Um, I'm going to do this orange color, but I'm going to do it a little bit more transparent, which I've already done. That's this color right here. So I have that. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with my border that I've done. I like this rounded look and I want to keep it consistent throughout the page. So do that. With the one and a radius of 30. And I also want to do some just general spacing. Um, I like to have my text spaced out so it's not so flush up against the sides like that. So I'm just going to do a uniform spacing all the way around. Um, and I also want to do just a little bit um, of a margin. Uh, I want to kind of space this out just a tad. So I'm going to do a little bit on the top and then a little bit on the bottom and then go ahead and save my change. And the reason that I did that is just to kind of give it just a little bit more space on the top and then to space it out on the bottom from this text once we get down to there. So just kind of getting it done ahead of time. Now, because we have three columns here, I want each one of those columns to be the same. So I'm going to do those same settings for each one. So I can do my spacing first since it's here. And I did a little bit on the top and a little bit on the bottom. My background color, I've already used it. So it's right here. That makes it easy. Same with my border. Save my change. So we have that. And then we'll do that same thing for the third column. Select my background color, do my spacing, do my painting, 
let's see, it might change. Give the page a quick refresh. And then we have this nice and organized and, and looking better than it did. Um, because we have our text against this, this orange background to kind of change things up a little bit, um, I do want to kind of tweak this just a little bit to make the text stand out more. Uh, one of the things that I want to do is when I click on this text, for this text right here, when I click on it, I can see it's my H4 heading. And the A just means it's a link. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, but with my current settings for my H4 heading, um, I don't like the way that that looks. So I've actually gone into my typography section and I've adjusted the settings for a different heading, which is heading six, um, to have a certain look and a certain color. And that's the heading that I want to use for this text. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna highlight this piece of text. And I wanna make sure that I highlight everything that's, that's underlined, everything that's made the link, so everything applies to it. I'm gonna go under formats and for headings, I'm gonna go down to heading six. So now when I click on this text, you can see it says H6, and this is what it looks like in the back. And I like that, I think that looks very nice. I also want to make this text, the normal text, stand out a little bit. And to do that, I'm gonna actually change the color of that text to white. But I can only do that by highlighting this text here going up to text color and changing it to white. It looks really nice there, stands out, pops a little bit, which is awesome. But just keep in mind when you change your text to white in your text area like this, it's white on a white background. So you can't see it. So if you ever want to do any edits for that text, you want to make sure to highlight it and change it to a text color that you can actually see so you can make those changes. Go ahead and save my change. Give it a refresh. And there we go. A uh, question came in, where do you go again for the title of your website? You, your title of your website is set in your site settings, business name. If you don't have a logo, that's where you put the name of your, your business, that's your website name. And you can adjust those settings in your typography section right there. All right, so now that we've done that for that section, we're going to do it for each one of these text areas as well. So we're going to do the same thing. Highlight our text here. Go under formats, change it to heading six. Highlight this text change it to white, save our change. Same thing here, highlight the text, change the heading to six, highlight the rest of this text, set it to white, save my change. Same thing here. Go to heading six, change this text to white, save my change. And finally, uh, because we have this extra space up at the top, I can actually get rid of some of that spacing as well. Highlight this portion here, change the heading, highlight the text, Send it to white. Give the page a quick refresh. Makes it stand out just a little bit more. Now the last thing that I wanna do is you have these little symbols that are next to this text. And the symbols are represented uh, for, for different things. Um, there's actually a little disclaimer down here in the bottom. Um, that you have in the bottom of your of your website. Um, so, <clears throat> Carol asks, what are the symbols after each heading in section six? That's what I'm just talking about right here. 
um, these little symbols. If you look down at the bottom of your template, you'll have this little disclaimer um, from IIN, which shows what those symbols mean. Um, they're basically just copyright things from, from IIN. So they're not part of heading six or section six or anything like that. It's just a symbol. Um, it's a piece of text. It's hard to see because it's very small. Um, but the last thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to highlight this piece right here. So you can see that I have that, that symbol highlighted. And if I go under formats and I go to inline, I can go down to superscript, which is right here. And that'll actually put that, that symbol up like that. So you can see in the background here, I can save that. Um, Carol says, do you have to keep them in there? If you're going to use this text as it comes with your template, yes, you do. Um, this text is provided by IIN. They added the symbols. They've also added in the little stipulation down at the bottom. It's something that they want to make sure is there. So if you want to use this text, if you want to use these headings, you do need to keep that stuff there. Um, Nobody's really going to, you know, check to make sure that you do it, but it's there. It's copyrighted. IN owns those terms. They've copyrighted, trademarked those terms. Um, so if you do use them, they want you to keep the credit there like that. So. Um, it's, it's not about the text. Carol's asking, what if you add or subtract from the text? It's the headings. So the integrative nutrition plate, primary food, bioindividuality, that stuff. If you're using those headings exactly as they are, because you're this little disclaimer down here at the bottom of your page, it's always going to be there. You can't get rid of it. So if you don't use those symbols, it's really not going to make much sense. So you are welcome. That's a good question, though. It really... Um, it's a weird thing, but yeah, so. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that for each one of these sections and those little symbols. I'm just gonna highlight that symbol. And then I'm gonna go under formats, again in inline and superscript. And you'll see that it'll shrink it down and, and pop it up like that. So it looks a little bit better. You could do subscript as well if you wanted to. Um, but I want it to be up like that. It just looks a little bit better. And do the same thing for this one like that. The page a quick refresh. Uh, Diane asked a great question. Where is that symbol located so we could include it? Um, it's actually right there. It comes with your template that way. It's on your template. Um, as for where you can get it, I have no idea. IAN provided us uh, this content and it was part of that. So. And Diana says, I haven't opened up my site yet. That's, that's totally fine. All of this content that you're looking at, all of this text comes with the templates. I'm not changing anything. I'm not adding anything. It's all there right out of the box. I'm just changing the way it looks. So, all right. So now we've taken care of that. So last section that we have is just this last little bit of text down at the bottom. I'm going to edit mode, this little piece down here. Uh, we're going to do the same thing that we've done before. Add in our background color. Uh, we'll select that white. And we'll just do our slider just a tad bit here. Um, do our border. Stick with that, that same rounded edge theme that we have for this page. So we have that. I'm just going to add some spacing down at the bottom here to kind of adjust some of that stuff. Um, you can see that I also have an extra piece of content down here. 
So I'm going to click on that and just remove it. <clears throat> now that we have our text here, I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I just want to make this text just a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to highlight, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this text on a different line. I'm going to highlight this first sentence and I just want to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to formats, font size, select 24. I actually want it to be a little bit bigger than that. So I'm going to check 36. I also don't want that to be uh, that much bigger. So I'm actually going to click, we've done this before. Uh, when we select font size, we're limited by what's available here. But once we've selected a size, we can go ahead and adjust that in our source code. So because I've set this font to 36, if I go over here to the source code, I can just find 36, which is right here, and I can change that to something else. Um, in this case, I don't want it to be quite so big, so I'm going to see what it looks like at 30, and then click OK. And I like that, so I'm going to go ahead and save that just a bit. Um, and I want to add a little bit of spacing on the bottom down there. So just going to add a little bit down the bottom here. And I'm going to add a little bit of margin to separate it from my blue footer area. Like that. Give the page a quick refresh. And I think we have it all taken care of. So again, we didn't change any text. We didn't do anything. We didn't add anything other than a background image and some colors. But that's what we've now got. So um, we just pop open our example site. This is the template. This is what the template looked like at first. And we changed it to this, very simply. Um, I, there's a bunch of questions coming in. You don't have to keep submitting the same question over and over again. As I said before, I will get to it when we get to the Q&A portion, unless it's directly related to what we're covering right now. So we will get to all those questions. Uh, we're, I'd like to get through a little bit more stuff today before we start tackling a bunch of questions. Um, I don't think there's anything really pertaining. Carol had a question. Uh, does the blue text indicate a link? If so, where does the link take you? Um, yes, the blue text indicates a link because that's the, the settings that I used to when I set up my, my settings for my fonts and everything, that's what I set my links to be. As for where they take you, all of the links that come with your template for the most part are already set up. So for the example, this one, if you click on it, it takes you to the contact page. So most of them are already set up for you um, to, to link to cer certain destinations on the site, on your website. You can change any single link of, uh, that's on your site. So you don't have to keep them there. You don't have to make links to, to different pages if you don't want to. It's 100% up to you. I'm just sticking with what came with the template and just showing you how to go about changing the way things look, not tackling into making any hardcore changes or anything like that. So, All right, so now that we have, we're done with this page, we've tackled this page. So it's distinctly different than what we started with, which is awesome. All right, and now one of the last things that we're gonna do is we're going to do the, the forms page. Um, most people probably don't even realize it's an actual page. Under your work with me menu, there's a link for, there's a forms, and then it opens up a tab for all the different um, IAN provided forms. Uh, we'll get to those next time. 
But for now, if you actually click on the forms listing, it takes you to your forms page, which is just a very basic page that says this information with links to the different forms. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to uh, just quickly edit this page. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it just because it's not a super important page. Uh, a lot of times people probably aren't even gonna mention, even, even realize that it's a page itself. They're going to just go right to the forms. So uh, we're gonna quickly get this one done and then we will tackle our Q&A. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, just like we did before, change the background color on the top. Um, for this one, I'm gonna mix it up and go yellow. Try to keep it a little bit different for each of the, each of the pages. Now down in our section one here, I'm actually going to just take this text for my title, put it up in the top, and just like we've done on other pages, just capitalize center. Um, the other stuff, um, I'm gonna move. I'm actually gonna move it down to section three. So I'm gonna take this text and I'm gonna move it down to section three. And I'm gonna take each one of these texts, each one of this, uh, these buttons, it's its own separate piece of text. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it. I like this section three because I have these three columns like that. Um, and that's how I'm going to utilize these buttons. So I'm just gonna move those down like so. Now, as far as this image goes, I'm not gonna use it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. Just like that. So now, right now, my page looks like this, which I could leave it like this if I wanted to. It's a very basic page. It still looks different than it came with the template, but I'm just gonna customize it just a tad. One of the things I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of spacing right up here. like so, like that to space that out. Now when I get down to my section three, I'm actually gonna add a background image to this particular section. Click on my notepad, click on my background, and click on my background image. Now for this one, I actually went to Content Manager and I did a search and I'm using this picture right here. So I click this picture and I can add it. Um, I've actually already added this picture to my file manager so I don't need to do it again. Um, but that's where I was able to use some of the, the, the free images that we have available for you in our content manager. Um, so that was pretty slick, worked out very nicely for me. to find that picture now, there it is. Now, just like we talked about before with background images, um, you, you don't necessarily need to have a specific um, size for them. In this case, I just left it the way it is. Um, I can adjust this if I want to. If I do that 1900 like we did before and click accept, it will place my background image for me. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my settings. Don't need to have it repeat. I want it to be covered. Now this time I'm actually not going to do an image scroll. I don't need it to be fixed because this page isn't gonna have a lot of stuff on it. So I'm just gonna leave it at none. And then for image position, I'm gonna put it at the top center. I want it to focus a little bit more up here so it looks like that. Now, so we can actually see our, our picture. I'm gonna go back to my settings here and go to my spacing. And what I'm gonna do is I want you to see my picture. So I'm gonna add in some padding for this section. And I'm going to be very, very dramatic in it because I want you to see the entire picture. So I'm gonna do 400 on the top. So you can see the actual picture. And then I'm gonna do 50 on the bottom. 
just going to refresh my page a little bit. You can see more of the picture. Uh, now, I get questions a lot like, where do I come up with these, these numbers as far as spacing and what I want to use? It's 100% trial and error. Uh, when you're placing a picture like that, you're going to spend some time adjusting the spacing and padding and so on, um, so you can actually find what, what works best for you. For all of these sessions, when I do this, I've actually already created this page, um, but I, I have it hidden, and I use it as kind of a basis um, to go ahead and start. So I spend a lot of time setting this up beforehand, so when we're actually doing the webinar, I can kind of just get right to it. So lots of trial and error are, is involved. All right, so now that I have that out, uh, what I want to do is take this text and I'm going to edit this text a little bit. Uh, one of the things that I want to do is I want to center this text. I also want to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to highlight it, go to font size and select 24. And while I have it highlighted, I'm going to go ahead and change the color. I'm going to change it to this light blue color that we have here. So I'm going to highlight this color number. And since I have my text highlighted, I can go under text color, click custom, paste in my color. There we go. Now, just like we did with our other text on our previous page, um, it's a little difficult to read that even against the white background. Uh, that picture kind of gets in the way there. So I want to click on my settings here and I'm going to apply that same white background that we had. Um, I'm also going to adjust some of the spacing for this particular um, section. I want my text to have a little bit of spacing on the top, not a ton on the, on the, on the right and left, but it gives me just this nice little kind of spacing out there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save that and refresh my page. What I'd also like is to have more of this image showing and having this text and stuff down towards the bottom. Um, so to do that, what I can do is for this section here, I can actually add in some margin on the top. So if I do some pretty extreme margins on the top, like so, now I can see even more of this picture. Um, and then I'm going to do a little bit on the bottom so I can space out these three buttons down at the bottom like that. So now you see the spacing here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and refresh the page. Uh, Karen asks, can you say once more where you put the background picture for this page? In what section? I did it in section three. I don't need to worry about section one and two because section one and two are by default having that white background, which the, the picture also has a white background. So it kind of blends in very nicely. Uh, but on this particular instance, the background image is just for section three. So I did that right there. All right, so now we see I have this down a little bit more like this. So this section is, is pushed down. Um, I can still see my picture very nicely. I can read my text because I have the background image. So the final thing I'm going to do is just configure my buttons so they look a little bit nicer. And to do that, all I'm going to do is click on my settings. And for text, I can do center. I could also have just clicked on my text and centered it here. Doesn't matter either way. Name it one more time for this one. Now I can leave it that way if I want to, um, but I actually want to make my buttons a little bit different. So if I click on my text and I actually highlight my text itself, I can see that it's set up as a link because it's set to be underlined and so on. And the little A icon here uh, tells me that it's a link. So if I click on my insert edit link button here, which is highlighted, 
I can see there's the information for my link. That's uh, taking me to the revisit form page. And right down here in the bottom, it's set to be button one, which gives button one is that, is that look there. Um, what I wanna do actually is I want to change that to full width button. And full width button, you'll see when I click okay, makes the button the full width of that content area. So because I have this relatively small section here, um, when I make it, I'll go ahead and save that. When I make it full width like that, it doesn't, it's not too, too overwhelming, but it makes that button stand out. It's very nice, easy to see, easy to read. So I'm gonna do that same thing for the other two buttons. Everything's all set up, so I'm just gonna change this to full width. Click OK, save my change. Click on this text, highlight my text, click on my link, everything's all set up. Change to full width, click OK, save the change, give it a quick refresh. And here we've gone through and we've customized this page in what, 10 minutes it took us? So we went from our basics form page that looked just like this to changing it to something that looks just like this. Very simple, looks different, has a nice, nice look to it, uh, nothing complicated, completely customized page in 10 minutes. This one's very easy because there's not much to it, uh, but that's just how simple it can be. Now each one of these buttons will link to the different forms on the different pages. So we have our revisit form, health histories, and so on. Um, when we click on those pages for the first time, um, sometimes they might be blank, depending on your template. You might get to this page and it'll look like this, it'll be completely blank. Um, to place those forms, you just use the IAN form application and you drag it to wherever you want to place it on your page and select which form you want to use. Just like that. Uh, Diana asks, what does button two option look like for the form button? Um, it's, it's going to depend on your template. Um, for the three original templates, it doesn't look much different. Um, I think it's a little skinnier. For this particular template, button two actually has rounded corners to it. Um, so it's just a little bit, a little bit different for each one. You can easily just check that um, when you are editing your, your page or creating your button or setting up your button. Um, you can just preview what it looks like. So if I wanted to see what button two looked like, I can select button two, click OK. That's what my button two looks like. So you can kind of do that as you're, as you're going through and editing. All right, so then since this one went so fast, we're gonna quickly do the forms pages. Uh, we'll start with the revisit form. Again, the revisit form itself is just the, the IANS form application. It's nothing special. You just drag the element, select your form, place it. Everything is right there for you. You don't, um, you don't have to do anything else with it. Um, but to make that page just stand out a little bit more, I mean, all you need to really do is a few simple things, kind of just like what we just did on the main forms page. Let me just pull up my basis here and I can show you very simply how to change the page. So we've placed our form just like this. Um, easy thing to do um, in section one, add a background image, just like we've done before. Go ahead and go to my photos, select my background image, Choose a size like so. Place my picture. 
Don't need a background color. Don't want to repeat. Set to cover. Set to fixed. Set to center. Actually, I'm going to set to top. A little bit different. Uh, I want to adjust my spacing just a tad. Um, nothing to be super extravagant here, um, but I want to adjust some spacing just on the top and the bottom. Get the page a quick refresh. So there's my form. To make sure I can see my form in the section where it's placed, which is section one here, just going to do what we did before. Add in our white background color. Maybe add in a little bit of padding around the tops and the sides just to make it a little bit more even. Give the page a quick refresh. And there we go. We have a completely customized form page. And we can do the same thing with our, with our health history pages for the men and the women. Uh, I think we'll tackle that a little bit next week. Um, and then we will kind of zip through the rest of the stuff, the resources and blog, and then tackle the contact page. And then we will be done. So, so today in our session, we actually did three pages. We did the My Approach page, changed the way that looked. Then we did our Forms page very quickly, just made that very simple, changed the way that looked a little bit. And then we tackled one of the Forms pages itself, which is very, very, very basic. Just added a background image and a background color just to make that form stand out just a little bit. And that is our webinar for today. Um, I don't really have um, anything else. We have a question. Uh, Anonymous said, uh, can you add additional questions to the form? No, you cannot. Um, if you're using the IAN provided forms in the, the forms application, such as the lead generation or the health history forms, they, they come as they are. They can't be edited. You can't change anything about them, um, so on. So. That's just the way that they come. So, a <clears throat> uh, question came in: How did you? How do you draw your signature? Down here, you use your mouse. It doesn't look the greatest, um, but you just click and you would write whatever you want. So. It's a neat little thing, so. But other than that, like I said, that's 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 the topic for this week. I don't have any anything else, so um, I don't think we have a ton of relevant questions pertaining to what we cover. We have a lot of good questions about um, general stuff, so we'll, I think we'll hop in right to the the uh, Q and A. We had a couple questions that came in. Um, Diane asked, the cooler's color option, how do we access that again? Is that a separate website? That is a separate website. Um, or do we link that to your website? There's no reason to link that to your website at all. It's just, a, it's a resource for you to get color schemes. I don't know why you would want to link to it, so you don't have to, um, but you can certainly use that. There's lots of other options out there. This is just one that I use. Um, I'll throw that chat, that URL into the chat window there for you, and you can uh, you can use that if you want to. Uh, but like I said, there's a lot of other options out there as far as getting colors for your website. Uh, Doretta says, can clients fill out the form right on the website? Yes, that's why you place it on the website, so they can fill it out right then and there. Um, are we obligated to this form? Nope, you're not obligated to anything. You are not obligated to a single thing on your website. You can erase everything on there if you want to. None of it is required. It's just there as options for you. So, <clears throat> Robin asks, can we visit that website? Which website?
the one that I'm working on? Uh, sure, I guess. Uh, it's This is just the website that we're using for the webinar. So that's in that chat window there. Um, you can visit it and, and browse it if you want to. So. <clears throat> All right, I think that that tackles the, the relevant questions um, to today's talk, today's webinar. So uh, I don't have anything else as far as our subject for today. Um, so we're going to now hop into the, the Q&A portion. Um, this, the, the recording will essentially end here. We don't include the Q&A portion to uh, the videos that are posted. So um, anything that we covered today, you will be able to watch um, in the video. Um, question came in, can I rewatch this for what was a bit too quick for me? Absolutely. That's why we record it and post it on the, on the support portal for you. So you can go through and you can watch it. You can pause it. You can rewind it. You can do whatever you want with the video. Um, so you can watch it as many times as you want. So that will be available later on today in our support portal. Um, so usually by the end of the day, at the very latest, it'll be up first thing in the morning, but there's really no reason why it wouldn't be up later on this afternoon. So if you feel like sticking around for the Q&A portion or if you've submitted a question, um, I will go through and I will make sure that I answer each one. Um, so I'm just going to start from the top and work my way down. So the oldest questions will get answered first. Um, so if you want to stick around for that, by all means, you certainly can. If you don't want to stick around for the Q&A, you don't have to. You can certainly hop off the meeting if you want. Um, but like I said, the recording's going to stop here. So the video will not include the Q&A portion. So, but if, you, uh, if you're hopping off, I wanna thank you for your time and hopefully you found today's session helpful. Um, and hopefully we will see you again next week.